No rabbit? No, no rabbit! Ooh, I'm terribly disappointed in you. However, I'm giving you just one more chance. Oh, no, you're not. If you want them, you can get them yourself. I'm staying. <laughs> <laughs> What a way to lead into my 2015 preview of the Arizona State Sun Devils. You know, at least a couple of things you think about when it comes to Tempe, Arizona. Of course, cactuses and year-round very warm climate. You know, blizzards? Uh-uh. No, not in that city. Well, when it comes to 10-win seasons for the football team, you know, that's something that Arizona State fans uh, did not think about. Uh, very often over the last 20 years. That's because it was a, a rare occurrence that was until, you know, a couple of years ago when they posted back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. Now, that's coaching. That's also recruiting, and you give Todd Graham a lot of credit for that. You know, he arrived at ASU three years ago, and they won eight games. But the last two years, back-to-back 10-win -back seasons and a 28-12 record, Arizona State, well, they are relevant in the world of college football. They open the season with a top 15 ranking, and a lot of people think that they are capable of winning the very difficult Pac-12 South Division, and perhaps if the uh, cards fall their way, they could wind up as one of those college football playoff teams. You know, it very well could happen if, again, the cards fall their way. Now, offensively, though, they'll have to overcome no longer having Taylor Kelly, a three-year starter, a guy that started well over 30 games, and, of course, they're going to miss his mobility as well. One good thing, though, for Todd Graham's offense, who last season averaged 37 points per game, was that Mike Berkovici had an opportunity to play because Kelly got hurt the latter part of the season, which meant that Berkovici was able to start four games. And, by the way, last season, not bad. 12 TDs, four interceptions, and for what it's worth, his arm is stronger, at least from the eye test, than Kelly's was. Now, of course, Kelly was a little bit better on his feet and in his um, um, favor had experience with the left and right tackles, something that Berkovici will not have entering the season as far as starting tackles goes. Arizona State gave up a lot of sacks as it was, and that was with Kelly's mobility. You know, Berkovici, even though he proved in four games that he could do the job, it's yet to be proved that he could do the job for the entire year. Plus, he won't have quite the same um, wide receiving arsenal that Kelly enjoyed. But uh, Berkovici, though, again, with the arm strength and the fact that he got his feet wet last year by being able to play a little bit, at least that gives Arizona State a little bit of stability at the QB position. Now, his favorite target this year could be a guy that last season saw time in the backfield. That is DJ Foster, 1,000-yard rusher for, from a year ago. But they discovered, they mean the Arizona State coaches, that this guy can be something else when it comes to catching passes, especially being able to catch on the fly and not really having to slow down. So you have a guy in DJ Foster who will now be your number one wideout in all likelihood now that you lose both Jalen Strong to the NFL and the unfortunate loss earlier this season of Cameron Smith to a, a knee injury. You won't see him in 2015. But a big pickup, though, for ASU was UCLA transfer Devin Luchin, so that'll help out a little bit. Speaking of the backfield for the Sun Devils, um, you'll have uh, DeMarco Richard, whom last season as a freshman had about 500 yards. So as a sophomore, Richard, along with Kalen Ballage, um, a young but very talented backfield. So Arizona State, as far as the ground game, you know, they should be set for the present and for the future. Offensive line, you return the interior. That never hurts with Nick Kelly back at center and a pretty good guard tandem. A couple of guys that could make all Pac-12 this season. Talking about Christian Westerman on the left side. And now on the right side, V. Um, Tolafio. And by the way, how about this? V. Convinced press, 225 pounds for about 40 reps. Now, that's strength right there. But the tackles, as I mentioned earlier, both have to be replaced because you lose Jamil Douglas and Tyler Sulka, a couple of good ones. So who can step in and make an immediate impact? Well, at right tackle, um, you'll have uh, William McGeehee. And a guy that Todd Graham's already pretty high on, yet he's never started a game. That's the left tackle spot um, with um, Evan Goodman. So those two guys have a lot of pressure to try to protect the uh, new full-time starter. And, of course, that is uh, Mike Berkovici. With Arizona State's defense last season, you could count on 
turnovers, okay? They were able to force plenty. In fact, ASU was one of the best teams in the country and has been for at least the past three years in turnover margin, 2014 plus 14. Also, two quarterback sacks. They had 40 in 2014. It's quite a bit. But they also, too, gave up their share, their share of big plays, especially through the air. And that really cost them in the game against Oregon State, in which the um, Beavers were able to score um, their fair share of uh, TDs through the air of the long variety. So, again, it's kind of made those defenses at times last year that, for the most part, were successful, but at times left themselves exposed. And we'll see what happens with Arizona State's defense this year if they uh, dial up as much pressure from the linebackers. It's a 3-4 alignment, and they are going to be young up front. This is probably the biggest area of concern for Arizona State because last season, you know, you had Marcus Hardison, the defensive end, who had 10 sacks, but he's not there anymore. But the future, well, it could be the present for ASU because you have uh, Joseph Wicker. Wicker, probably the most valuable defensive recruiting um, star from California. And by the way, you know, Todd Graham has done a marvelous job in recruiting from the state of California. Uh, Wicker will more than likely uh, see a lot of playing time, especially early on. Don't be surprised if he's a starter as early as the season opener against Texas A&M. Is that good? And nose tackle, your only full-time starter up front, that is the Tashawn Smallwood, just a sophomore. The linebackers, this area seems to be a little more solidified. Um, you return the inside linebacker, uh, Salomo Fiso. And you return another inside linebacker, um, although not as experienced in Antonio Longino. Outside linebacker, boy, this is a difficult name to pronounce, but he's an impact player as well. And that's uh, Villa Ami Machiola. Like I said, not an easy name to pronounce, uh, Villa Ami Machiola. And this defensive backfield, probably their area of their biggest strength because you return three players. Um, Jordan Simone. You have him as a safety, but unfortunately, um, Demarius Randall, he's moved on now to the NFL. But both corners do return against Simone. Um, he's a starter from last season, about 100 tackles, two interceptions a year ago. Both corners are back, and Lloyd Carrington could be all Pac-12 this year, 58 tackles. And by the way, the other corner returns to in Kawishi Brown. Very athletic uh, backfield, uh, and they can hit. And again, you return three quarters of the secondary. As far as the special teams goes, looks pretty good as far as kicking, punting. Both guys come back as far as um, ASU goes. Zane Gonzalez plays kicking and um, Drew Riggleman as your punter. However, Todd Graham still not completely satisfied with special teams. That was because the return game was almost non-existent. So bring in new special teams coach Sean Slocum. See if Gump Hayes, who's also a receiver for ASU, will see um, how they utilize him very, very speedy uh, as far as returning the uh, as far as returning the football. Looking at the schedule for Arizona State, they'll find out right away where they stack up as they'll take on an SEC offensive power in Texas A&M. Should be a high-scoring game. Might as well be a road game for ASU. The game's being played in Houston, which is just a uh, which is just basically a few miles away from College Station. Then we enter the conference openers. This is the two-game stretch to watch for if you're an ASU fan. Late September, early October, host USC. Remember the Hail Mary game last year at the Coliseum where Arizona State scored on the final play of the game. The following week, you go to the Rose Bowl to face UCLA at early October showdown. The Bruins absolutely embarrassed ASU last year. I'm sure Arizona State has not forgotten that at all. And then the schedule after that doesn't look too bad until you get into uh, late October. Don't forget about the Utah game. Of course, that could be a sleeper because Utah can score points in that game's at Salt Lake. And that's the uh, week before Oregon. But at least with Oregon, you get 12 days to prepare. That's right. Oregon game will be on a Thursday night in late October. And November, probably the easiest month of the three. And you get Arizona, though, your state rival who beat you a year ago. But this time you get them in Tempe. That's the second to the last game of the year. And don't overlook Cal with Sunday Dykes' um, offense. That could be one of those games that sneaks up on ASU if they're not careful, and that's who you close the season out with. But this schedule, realistically, is one of the toughest I've seen so far in my 2015 college football previews. 
beginning, of course, with that uh, game in Houston against Texas A&M. It's going to be a mighty test for Arizona State's defense. And other than the SEC West, the Pac-12 South is the toughest division in college football. Five of the six teams from this division a year ago, including Arizona State, um, won at least nine games. And three of the teams, including ASU, won ten. So, yeah, that right there is a pretty tall order, plus the fact that you get Oregon on the schedule as well. I think Arizona State's going to be good, but um, I think they're just a cut below USC and UCLA. So I'm going to say 8-4 and four for Arizona State with a 6-3 and three conference record and third-place finish in the South. That's my look at Arizona State. Catch you next time.